just want to be where you are Dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar Draw me near to where you are I just want to be where you are in your dwelling place forever Take me to the place where you are I just want to be with you I want to be where you are Dwelling in your presence Feasting at your table Surrounded by your glory In your presence That's where I always want to be I just want to be And I just want to be with you I just want to be where you are Dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar I just want to be And I just want to be And I just want to be with you Oh my God you are my strength and my song And when I'm in your presence Though I'll make you always strong I just want to be where you are In your dwelling place forever Take me to the place where you are Cause I just want to be with you I just want to be where you are In your dwelling place forever Take me to the place where you are Cause I just want to be And I just want to be with you I just want to be I just want to be with you I just want to be I just want to be I just want to be And I just want to be With you Psalm 124 if the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say. If the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Magandang umaga. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to All Generations Church. And we hope kayo po ay nasa mabuting kalagayan ngayon na habang pinapanood nyo po ito sa inyong tahanan. Um, ito pong ating binasang Psalms, ito pong uh, bago po itong prayer time, no? it's in Psalm 124 And ito po yung magandang reminder na nag 
papaalala po sa atin about certain things, lalo-lalo na po ngayon sa mga nangyayari sa ating um, situation sa buhay natin. No? Kung saan parang feeling natin marami tayong kaaway, maraming masamang nangyayari, or maraming un- uncertainty, hindi pagkakasiguro sa mga bagay-bagay. And sometimes it tends to overwhelm us, it tends to to somehow make us panic and lose our faith. No? Pero maganda po itong reminder ng Psalm 124. No? Sabi niya po dito, even though there will be men who will be against us, left and right, and the flood and the torrent of the rivers will swallow us, no? still the Lord will save us and let us praise the Lord for that. At ang pinaka gustong gusto ko pong verse dito na part is yung verse 8. Sabi niya po dito, our help is in the name of the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. Lahat po na nandito sa mundo ay nilikha at ang lumikha po ay ang Panginoon. And kung ang nire-remind po sa atin ng sum na ito na ang ating tulong or ang nagliligta sa atin ay ang Panginoon who is the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth, isa po siyang maganda at nakakakalma na reminder. No? Kung ang buong mundo ay everything in the earth has been created, Ang tutulong sa atin, ang magsisave at magpoprotect sa atin is the one who created the earth. Not only the earth, even the heavens. No? So, ano man po yung inyong pinagdadaanan ngayon, mabigat man siya, mahirap man po siya, feeling nyo po you are being attacked on every side, feeling nyo uh, ma-overwhelm kayo ng kung ano-ano man. Keep heart this verse, no? you keep it in your heart. Psalm 124 verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. See, Paul, we're going to give you a few minutes, uh, a few minutes of your time where you can um, pray to God, talk to God, exhort Him, uh, um, whisper niyo po yung inyong mga prayers sa Kanya, yung inyong pong mga requests. We're going to give you uh, a few minutes and then we're going to close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up, we lift you up, Father God. We come to you this day with with, praise, with praises and worship, Father God, and nothing else. Lord, we thank you na kayo po ang nandyan na nagpo-protect sa amin. And like you said in your word, no, you are the one who created the heavens and the earth. And Lord, alam po namin na dahil kayong lumikha nito, wala po kaming kailangan katakutan magamat may mga times, may mga situations na nakaka-overwhelm or nakakalunod ang feeling or parang napipipi na kami sa mga problema, ma- makoconsume kami, Panginoon, our help comes from you. Lord, may we always remember this, that you are always there. You are our steadfast help. You are our steadfast rock. You are the rock of our salvation, Father God. Lord, we thank you for, for you are this God that we can always turn to. You are the God that we can always cry for help to Panginoon and we know that you will answer us we know that you will save us Father God Lord sa mga nangyayari po ngayon sa panahon na ito kung saan marami pong uncertainty madami pong problema Panginoon we lift up to you all the situation Panginoon Nung mga times na give up na kami mga times na hindi na namin alam ko ano yung gagawin Lord kami po ay merong pananampalataya sa inyo that you will provide that you will save us during this time Panginoon 
Lord, in the same way that you keep on sparing us, you keep on looking over us, Father God, we pray that may you continue to protect us, lalo na po ngayon na hindi pa po tapos yung yung pandemic, Panginoon. We thank you na patuloy nyo kami pinoprotektahan, pati ang aming mga loved ones, Father God. Patuloy pa rin kayo nagpo-provide. Ganon din po, Lord, we extend the prayer of protection sa mga um, health workers, frontliners po namin, Panginoon. At saka po sa mga breadwinners ng aming pamilya na pumapasok na po ngayon, Panginoon. Kayo po ang patuloy na mag mag-protect sa kanila and mag-save sa kanila, Panginoon, from this pandemic disease. And Lord, sa araw po na to, Panginoon, as we gather to to worship and praise your name and as we gather to listen to your word, Lord, may you reveal yourself to us. May you show us your glory, Panginoon, and may our hearts be open to receive your word. And if lives need to be changed and things need to be changed, Father God, may, it, may we be humble enough to do so, Father God. Lord, we lift back all the glory. We give you up all the, the glory, the praise. We lift back to you all the honor and we love you father god in jesus name we pray amen come and let us worship the lord with praise songs and worship songs
ask your name Gathered as your family To praise you and proclaim Your faithfulness and mercy Cause we give you glory We give you honor We give you everything we are Lifted our hearts and hands before Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat na mga membro ng All Generation Church sa Imos, sa Pilipinas at sa buong mundo. Salamat sa inyong pakikinig sa ating online worship. Nawa, kayo po ay pinagpapala pag nagpipreach ang mga pastors ng All Generation Church. Kumusta po kayo? Buhay pa po ba kayo? Uh, kumakain pa po ba kayo? Malakas pa po ba? Nagpapatuloy pa ba ang inyong pananampalataya? At dalangin namin na kayo tumatag at maging matibay at nasa maayos na kalagayan ang inyong pamilya. Pagpalain po kayo ng ating Panginoon. Gusto ko po ay kwento yung kwento ni Lily Ku in Chengdu, China. Sabi niya, in China, uh, they're closing churches, jailing pastors, and even rewriting scriptures. Despite of persecution, Christianity is exploding in China. Yung, the country has a population of over 1.4 billion people but has a small number of evangelical Christians. Hearts are open and people are responding to the gospel. 7.5% are evangelical or about 105 million Christians, sabi ng www.reachabilities.org. China's Communist Party is intensifying religious persecution as Christianity's popularity grows. So noong nakaraan daw 2018, the pastor of one of China's 
best known underground churches as his congregation. Nang ganito, kayo ba'y naging matagumpay sa pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos sa inyong community o sa inyong siyudad? Halimbawa, isang araw, ang early rain Christian covenant church suddenly disappeared of the city of Chengdu. Bawat isa ba sa atin ay naging epektibo na pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos? O na-miss nyo ba ang bawat isa? Sabi ng kanilang pastor. At talagang uh, binibigyan ng diin na sa kabila ng pag-uusig ay ipangaral ang salita ng Diyos. Pagkatapos ng tatlong buwan, itong kanilang pastor ay sinubok. The church in southwest China had been shattered and Wang and his wife remained in detention after police arrested more than 100 of their members in December. At maraming mga Kristiyano na nakulong, nagtago dahil sa kanilang pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos. Others have been sent away from Chengdu and barred from returning. At yung iba, na mga kamag-anak nila at kanilang mga anak ay under close surveillance ng gobyerno ng China. Wang and his wife are being charged for inciting subversion, a crime that carries a penalty up to 15 years in prison. Early Rain is the latest victim of what Chinese Christian and right activists says is the worst crackdown on religion since the country's cultural revolution when Mao Zedong governments vowed to eradicate religion. Over the past, local governments have shut down of hundreds of unofficial congregations or house churches that operated outside the government approved church network including early rain. Churchgoers say, says the situation will get worse as the campaign reaches more than of the country, more of the country. And another church in Chengdu was placed under investigation last week. Less than a week after the massive arrest, early rain members, police raided children's Sunday school at a church in Guangzhou. Bakit ko po kinikwento itong ganitong kwento? Dahil meron pong kinalaman sa ating topic sa umagang ito. Ang ating title ng mensahe sa umagang ito, Why do Christians suffer? Why do Christians suffer? At matatagpuan niya sa 1 Peter chapter 4:12 to 16. Sabi ng verse 12, Their friends do not surprise at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests in you. If you suffer, you should not be as a murderer or thief or any kind of criminal, criminal or even as a meddler. However, If you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Manalangin tayo. Nakilang Diyos, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to worship you sa umagang ito. Salamat sa kalayanan ay binigay mo sa aming bansa and I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch us and work in us and convict us to apply what we learn this morning from your word. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My research po ang Barna Group sa Amerika. Nag-survey sila more than 1,200 na katao to gather information on the problem they face. They were asked to identify their single most serious need or problems. Ang una na nilagay nila, financial or money. Pangalawa, job related. Pangatlo, health. Pang-apat, time and stress. Pang-lima, parenting. Pang-anim, educational attainment. 
seven fear and eight personal relationship personal calamities na na raranasan natin pagsubok problema ay dumadating talaga sa atin at marami nag-iisip na mga tao na pag sila nakagawa ng pagkakamali parang isip nila ay pinaparusahan sila ng Diyos hindi nila alam that God has a divine purpose for every suffering trials and problem that they encounter sa kanilang buhay why because God doesn't send problems but sometimes he allow us to go through these sufferings with purpose merong dahilan palagi kung bakit tayo nakakaranas ng suffering at pagsubok sa ating buhay dito po sa 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 binanggit ni Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to God's elect strangers in the world scattered through Pontus Galatia Cappadocia Asia and Bithynia Peter wrote Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 1 Therefore since Christ suffered in his body arm yourselves also with the same attitude because whoever suffers in the body is done with you Peter wrote to Christians who are strangers and aliens to foreign country who experience various forms of persecution men and women who stand for Jesus Christ made them aliens and strangers in the midst of pagan society because of their faith peter encouraged these christians to continue in their faith and excellent behavior even in the midst of suffering and persecution the man and woman peter wrote to knew what it was like to be away from home not by choice but by force So inuusig sila dahil sa kanilang pinan, pinan, pinaniniwalaan at sa kanilang pananampalataya sa Diyos. Sa kabila ng pagsubok sa kanilang buhay, sila ay nagpapatuloy. Sabi ni Warren Worsby in his book entitled Be Hopeful, says this about the recipients of the letter, the important thing for us to know about this is scattered strangers is that they were going through a time of suffering and persecution at least 15 times in this letter referred peter to suffering and he used eight different greek words to those who some of these christians were suffering because they were living godly lives and doing what was good and right others were suffering abuse for the name of christ and being attacked by unsaved people peter wrote to encourage them to be good witnesses to their persecutors and to remember that their suffering would lead to glory. Kaya in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 and 7, ginamit ni Peter yung word trials rather than tribulation or persecution because he was dealing with the general problem that Christians face as they surrounded by unbelievers. Facts about suffering. Una, sufferings are everywhere. Kahit saan meron pong suffering in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange was happening to you. Dapat tayong mga Kristiyano hindi tayo magugulat pag dumating yung matitindi at biglang pagsubok sa buhay dahil kasama natin, dahil kasama yan sa ating pagiging Kristiyano. Life is like a school. Sometimes teachers give us quizzes and exams you can have a school without test hindi pwedeng makatanggap ng diploma ang isang high school na walang degree na walang exam through education yung degree ay depende sa ating ginawang examination katulad ng ating Panginoong Sokristo the curriculum of Jesus is much the same ang maganda dito sa God's schoolroom is that makukuha natin yung grade natin sa pamamagitan ng test sa ating buhay. Hindi tayo sinusubok para malaman kung paano tayo kausay. Sinusubok tayo ng Diyos para madiscover natin kung paano tayo katatag pag dumating ang matinding pagsubak, pagsubok sa ating buhay. Paano ba suffering comes to teach us to test our faith? Hebrews 11 verse 17 By faith, 
Abraham, when he was tested, offered Isaac, who had been received the promises, was offering up his unique son. Gusto ng Diyos na mapalakas ang ating pananampalataya pag tayo ay dumaranas sa pagsubok sa ating buhay. Only exercise can give strength. Kaya ang Biblia, kinagamit ng Diyos yung mga suffering and difficulties upang mapalakas ang ating pananampalatay sa Diyos. At tayo ay lalong magiging matatag pag dumarating ang adversities at na-overcome natin ito sa ating buhay. Higit sa lahat, sa mga matitinding dagok ng buhay, masusubok ang katatagan ng isang tunay na hinubog na Kristiyan. Kaya huwag tayong magulantang o magulat pag dumating. Ang pinakamatinding pagsubok o hirap na susubok sa ating pananampalatay sa Diyos. Mapapansin natin that trial is intended to test your quality, to test your character, and to test your faith. In other words, don't think it's a big deal when you go through tough times in life. Kasi gagamitin ng Diyos ang kahirapan para mahubog at malinis tayo sa ating buhay. God is trying to shape us into the person He wants us to be. Pangatlo, suffering can be solved. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. <coughs> Therefore, we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall in the heart of the sea. Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. Suffering and problems always have an answer. Marahil yung sagot ngayon ay nakatago pa, pero may sagot, huwag kang magalala. Kasi sasagutin ng Diyos ang mga problema natin sa buhay. Ang problema hindi doon sa paghanap ng solusyon sa problema, kundi sa kung handa ka bang magsakripisyo para matugunan ito. Are you willing to pay the price? Handa ka bang magbayad ng yung sakripisyo ng yung buhay sa darating ng mga problema sa iyo? Ang tanong, why do Christians suffer? Why do Christians experience suffering? One, because Christ suffered. First Peter chapter four, verse thirteen to fourteen. But rejoice that you participate in the suffering of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests in you. Ibig sabihin dito na bilang Kristiyano dapat pa ring mag-rejoice habang nakakaranas ka ng kahirapan at pagsubok sa buhay. Hindi ako nagsasabi niyan, kundi si Pedro or si Peter siya ang nagsabi na magpatuloy kayong magalak pag dumaranas kayo ng pagsubok. To the degree that you share the suffering of Christ, so keep on rejoicing. Literal na sinasabi ko, huwag na tayong magtaka dahil hindi tayo nakikisama sa magulong pamumuhay ng mundong ito. Kaya nga tayo nilalait dahil sa relasyon natin kay Kristo. Inuusig tayo, pinapahirapan dahil tayo po ay mga Kristiyano. The burning fire is of course the symbol in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7 of affliction and persecution. Sabi sa talata, this have been come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Binabalikan ni Apostol Pedro na yung mga suffering na kahirapan ay dapat expected na nila, katulad ng mga pamumuhay kay Kristo, na mumuhay kay Kristo, na makakaranas din ng pag-uusi. Kaya nga si Pedro ay palagi nagpapalala na huwag magulat sa mga nangyayaring pagsubok at harapin ito na mayroong kapayapaan at katatagan mula sa ating Diyos. Itong pandemic na ito nating na nararanasan ngayon, 
Yan sa virus. Ay, hindi naman pag-uusig. Dahil sa pagsunod natin sa Panginoon. Kundi sinusubok din ang ating pananampalataya kung paano harapin ang kahirapan at pagsubok na ito. At ito mga kapatid ay umpisa lamang sa mas malaking pagsubok na harapin natin sa darating na panahon. Kumbaga sa paaralan, quiz pa lang ito, hindi pa ito yung final exam. Introduction pa lang ito. Preliminary pa lang po ito. Baka sa susunod, papipiliin na tayo ng mas matinding pagsubok sa ating buhay. Grocery o Kristo. Trabaho mo o Kristo. Pag-aaral ng anak mo o Kristo. Ang asawa mo o si Kristo. Kayamanan mo ba o si Kristo? Hindi ito imposibleng mangyari sa hinarap kasi ang mararanasan patindi ng patindi ang pagsubok na darating sa ating buhay. Kaya naranasan natin sa pandemic na ito, introduction pa lang yan. Palagay ko, meron pang darating at darating pa na mas matinding pagsubok. Ipagkakaanulo ng kapatid ang kanyang sariling kapatid upang ipapatay. Gayun din ang gagawin ng ama sa kanyang anak at lalabanan ng mga anak ang kanilang mga magulang at ipapapatay ang mga ito. Matthew 10 verse 21. Kaya kung isipin mo, itong ating nararanasan na pandemic, magaan pa pala ang problema natin ngayon kasi ang problema lang natin ngayon, sardinas, bigas, pagkain lang. Pero paano sa susunod na panahon? Pangalawa, because of our own wrongdoing. Nakakaranas ang mga Kristiyano ng mga suffering dahil sa mali nilang ginagawa. Sabi ng 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 15, If you suffer, it should not be as murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. Si Peter ay na-expose niya yung suffering na hindi dapat ito ang dahilan sa mga mali nating ginagawa o mga kasalanan nating ginagawa. Yung mga gumagawa ng kasalanan ay mag-expect na kayo na tatanggapin nyo yung mga consequence nyo sa mga maling behavior nyo at sa mga maling pagsunod nyo kay Kristo. Pero dapat hindi ganoon eh. If the Christian experience suffering, hindi dahil sa kanyang ginagawang mali, kundi dapat sa kanyang pananampalataya at pangangaral ng Diyos. Kaya tayo nagsasuffer, yung iba nagsasuffer ng mga Christian dahil na rin sa kanilang kagagawan ng mga kasalanan. May mga consequence. Dito sa verse 15, idinidin ni Apostol Pedro na ang kanilang suffering ay hindi dahil sa pag-uusig sa kanilang pananampalataya, kundi sa bunga ng kanilang ginagawang pagkakasala. Kaya ito ay hindi nagbibigay kaluwalhatian sa Diyos. Katunayan, meron pang ang consequence itong mga bagay na ginagawa nila. Inaanin lang nila ang bunga ng kanilang kasalanan sa kanilang mga maling ginagawa. They're merely reaping the consequences of wrongdoing the absent. Deserve nila ang treatment na ito. Nararapat lang na maparusahan sila dahil sa kanilang ginawang pagkakamali at mapaalalahanan na kung ano ang idinanim, siya rin ang aanihin. Peter stressed that it is not an excuse to disobey the Lord just because they are persecuted as a result of their wrongdoing, being a thief, murderer, troublesome, meddler. Dapat walang lugar ito sa ating mga Kristiyano. Kung nakagawa ka man ng kasalanan, kapatid, dapat hindi ka nagre-reklamo sa nararanasan mong kahirapan dahil yan ang konsekwens mo sa pagsuway mo sa utos ng Diyos. Hindi mo kailangan i-justify kung ikaw ay maporosahan dahil sa iyong kasalanan. Ang pwede mong gawin, magpakumbaba, humingi ka ng tao sa Diyos, magbalik sa Diyos, iayos ang buhay, at muling sumunod sa kanyang kalaoban. Halimbawa, sa mga Kristiyano na nakatira sa ibang bansa ngayon, okay naman sumama sa peaceful rally. Okay naman na magpahayag ng kanilang karapatan bilang mamamayan ng kanilang bansa. 
Pero dapat hindi humahantong sa paninira ng ari-arian ng iba at sa pagnanakaw sa mga pag-aari ng iba katulad ng tindahan at ng mga grocery. At kung ikaw ay mapurusahan dahil sa iyong paglabag sa batas, e konsekwensyon sa iyong ginawa. Ang gawin mo, aminin mo, at tumingi ka ng tawad sa Diyos at patatawarin ka ng Diyos. Kung ikaw ay kristyano na nakatanggap ng dobling ayuda sa ngayon na galing sa gobyerno, pwede mo ang ibalik dahil hindi yan naayon sa batas at baka magkaproblema ka pa sa hinaharap. Kaya huwag tayong gagawa ng mga bagay bilang mga kristyano na taliwas sa salita ng Diyos. Tulad ng pagnanakaw, tulad ng pagpatay, at pakikialam sa buhay ng iba. Pangatlo at panguli, we be, because why we experience suffering we, because we embrace the Christian faith. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Instead of shame, we should feel honored when we suffer for our Lord because of our faith in Him. It is a privilege to bear wounds for the one who pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. In Isaiah 53 verse 5, But He was pierced because of our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. And by His wounds, we are healed. When we suffer, we should not be ashamed. Be able to take comfort knowing it is for our faith in the Lord instead of murmuring against His plan and will for our life. There is no shame of one suffers as Christian. Why? Because the name should be a source of praise to God for it identifies the bearer with the blessings of salvation. Salvation. Kaya, kung ikaw man ay kristyano na nakakaranas ng suffering, huwag kang mahiya. Diniklay ni Pedro, the Christian has no reason to be ashamed for, the, for their suffering for the faith. This is one of only three times the word Christian is found within the New Testament. Nung panahon ni Pedro, pag sinabing ikaw ay Kristiyano, madalas ikaw ay minamaliit, mababa ang tingin nila sa iyo pag binanggit na Kristiyano. Kaya yung term na Kristiyano ay napakahalaga. Kasi gusto ni Pablo na yung mga Kristiyano ay embrace nila yung kanilang pananampalataya at hindi sila na mahiya na tatayuan boldly na sinasabi nilang sila'y Christian. And they are willing to identify with this suffering. Maraming mga Christian na napipersecute dahil sa kanilang pananampalataya, kahit sa matataas na posisyon. Kaya lang ang problema, itinatago nila yung pagiging Christian nila. There is no shame to identify with Christ our Lord. We all have been in the situation when we are uncomfortable, na parang feeling natin na tayo lang ang nag-iisa sa grupo, pero naniniwala tayo, nakasama natin ng Panginoon bilang mga mananampalataya, we should never be ashamed to identify with our Lord. Halimbawa, sa mga sikat na tulad ng NBA player na Stephen Curry, ipinangangalanda ka niya sa sapatos na idinesign at nilagay ang I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Sabi ni Stephen Curry, there are distractions left and right. But find ways to impact people with how you walk. Whether you say anything or not, that they can see something that different about you and how you carry yourself. That's to follow Jesus. His favorite verse is Philippians 4.13. Ulitin ko ulit, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hindi siya nahiya. 
at pinangahawakan niya yung talata na yan sa Biblia. Si Manny Pacquiao, sabi niya, the most important thing is the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord will be glorified. I want to let the people know that there is God who can raise people from nothing into something. Ulitin ko, sabi niya, I want to let the people know that there is a God who can raise people from nothing into something. And that's me, sabi niya. I came from nothing into something. Hindi siya nahiya na siya mahirap. Hindi siya nahiya na sinasabi na mahirap siya dahil sa Panginoon, pinaas ng Diyos at naging iskat siya. Dahil sa kanyang pananampalataya at pagsusumikap. Kaya, sinasabi niya palagi, I came from nothing to something. Ina-acknowledge siya ang Panginoon sa kanyang buhay. Pag tayo po ay humaharap sa mga taong nilalait ang ating pananampalataya, tandaan po natin yung pangako ni Pedro na ina-encourage niya tayo na maging mabuting patotoo kay Kristo kaysa hayaan natin yung takot at yung hindi natin sinasabi na meron tayong Panginoon sa ating buhay. Their faithfulness to the Lord, especially in difficult times, would provide a tremendous witness for their faith in Christ. These difficult moments should be viewed as opportunities rather than inconvenience. Ang buhay natin ay katulad ng ilaw nagagamitin ng Diyos upang magliwanag sa kadiliman. Ito ang ganitong pagkakataon nating nararanasan. Dapat nagliliwanag tayo sa kadiliman ng mundong ito. Being a faithful witness, when we are forced to stand alone, often bears general great influence. Those with whom we interact may never admit it publicly, but we are confident they will notice our commitment and it will make an impact in their lives. We must commit to being a consistent witness regardless of the situation or company or community, community we are among. Sa panguli, sabi ni John Piper, Christians are never anywhere by divine accident. There are reasons for why we wind up where we do. Consider what Jesus said about painful and planned circumstances. They will say their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Christ is infinitely worthy. Here is a golden opportunity to show that He is worth more than life. Don't waste it. Nawa, kahit nakakaranas tayo ng kahirapan sa ganitong pagkakataon, huwag tayong tatalikod, bagkos, magpatuloy tayo sa ating pananampalatay at makikita mo na gagawa ang Diyos sa iyong buhay at yung at sa iyong pamilya at ipapakita na na siya ay buhay sa iyo. Pagpalain po kayo ng Diyos at nawa maranasan niyo ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa inyong buhay.
Yet love is way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your need? What if trials of this life? We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. We cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness, we doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not. Panginoon, pribilehyo na ako'y gamitin mo na mag-alay ng panalangin sa worship service sa araw na ito. Pinupuri kita at pinasasalamatan sa ginagawa mo sa aking buhay spiritual. Dalangin ko po na bigyan mo pa po ako ng lakas ng loob, pagkitiwala sa sarili, at matibay na pananampaltaya sa iyo. Dalangin ko rin po ang mga kapatirang kristyano na dumaraan sa mga mga panuring mata ng mga nag-aalinlangan at wala pang pananalig sa Diyos. Ipuin mo po sila. Dalangin ko po na patuloy silang magtiwala sa may kapal na laging tapat sa kanyang pangako. Sa kanya tayo umasa na hindi niya tayo pababayaan. Ituon natin ang ating mga paningin sa kanya lamang. Lagi tayong magpasalamat sa Kanya. Magkaroon tayo ng kagalakan bilang Kristiyano sapagkat sumasa atin ang dakilang Espiritu, ang Espiritu ng Diyos na patuloy na nag-iingat at gumagabay sa atin. 
Dalangin ko rin po ang lahat ng tao sa mundo na ingatan sila at iligtas sa COVID-19. Dalangin ko rin po ang mga locally stranded individuals na naninirahan at nagkitiis sa ilalim ng tulay at sa mga sidewalk. Napatuloy silang tulungan ng gobyerno upang makuwi na sila sa kanika nilang bayan at mabigyan ng ayuda. At ang mga OFWs na hindi pa makauwi ng Pilipinas, maging ang aking anak na nasa barko, ingatan mo po siya at alagaan. Dalangin ko rin po ang mga nawala ng hanap buhay, walang makain, walang tirahan. Bantayan mo po ang kanilang mga isipan na dahil sa sobrang kahirapan ay makaisip ng masama sa lipunan at sa kanilang kapwa. Kayo po ang mamuno sa kanilang mga buhay. At dalangin ko rin po ang aming audience charge at lahat ng miyembro nito na bigyan po sila ng lakas, talino at lubos na pagtitiwala sa Diyos. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us always. Amen.